What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Steam Boss video. Hope you all are doing great today. We have a little different one for you today. We're going to show you how to install carpeting for beginners. Alright, so in this video we are going to give you a step-by-step -step process of how to install carpet. So right now we are currently in our uh, test room here. It is a pretty standard bedroom, about uh, 13 by 10. So first, let's show you the tools that you're going to need. Alright, so here we have the basic tools that you're going to need to install carpet. So first you're going to need a carpet tucker. This is very important because this is what you're going to be using to tuck the new carpet back into underneath the baseboard area there. So you're going to need some sort of carpet tucker, whether it is metal or this one here is plastic. Next, you're going to need a utility knife. Um, these kind of knives are the ones that uh, install professionals prefer that have the, uh, let me show you guys here if I can do this with one hand, uh, since I don't have a blade out. These kind have the double-sided blades like this instead of your traditional blades, but you should be able to use a regular utility knife if that's what you have. This is obviously important because you need to cut the carpet to fit the room. Now this tool isn't necessarily a needed tool, but it is very helpful pulling up the old carpet. This is called a carpet owl. So this is used in conjunction with our uh, knee kicker, which we'll go over in a second, in order to stab through the carpet here and be able to pull it up since you can't really pull it with your fingers like that, especially if it's installed correctly. So you're gonna want this to get a good grip underneath it to help pull the carpet up. You have your knee kicker. Now, many of you uh, may be familiar with what this is or have at least seen one before uh, in your, <laughs> I guess, daily lives. So, so this is what's called a carpet knee kicker. So this is a tool that a lot of people will straight up use to install carpet. Now, um, in a closet, whether it be a smaller closet or maybe a larger closet or maybe a small room, you can get away with using one of these uh, if you don't want to have a professional do it. In my opinion, this is not an installation tool. This is, like I said, mainly made for smaller areas. You're going to want a power stretcher, which I will show you right here. The power stretcher is a tool that's going to prevent you from getting carpet ripples in the future and making sure your carpet is actually installed properly. Now, most do-it-yourselfers are not going to have uh, one of those power stretchers because they are very expensive, um, where these are about uh, $80 or so, maybe at Home Depot, uh, in a room this size, which I'll just show you kind of what we're working with here. So this is about how big this room is. Um, you could get away with doing a knee kicker. I will be using a power stretcher, but just for the sake of video, if you really, really need to just get by to do like one room or something like that, you could probably do it with the knee kicker. Another optional tool besides the uh, the carpet owl here is going to be this carpet trimmer, which really helps. Uh, instead of having to use your utility knife in order to trim the carpet, you can use your uh, carpet trimmer, which is much, much faster. And of course, the most important thing, you need some coffee because yeah. So the last thing that you may or may not need, depending on how large of the room you're doing is, is a carpet seamer. Now that's not really for a beginner use. You should be an experienced carpet installer, or at least had some form of training in order to use a carpet seamer, because you could burn your carpet, burn yourself, or it's harder than it looks. But for a room like this, most carpet, or I should say all carpet that you buy comes in 12 foot rolls. So when you have a room that is this size, as long as one of the sides is uh, 12 feet or less, you won't need a carpet seamer, uh, but for larger rooms, you will need to seam the carpet, but that's for a different video, and if you have to seam it, I would recommend having a professional do it. As we're on the topic of professionalism, I would probably always recommend, honestly, having carpet or flooring installed by a professional, unless you are very handy yourself and happen to have a lot of these tools. Um, the tools can be expensive, they do add up. Uh, some of this stuff doesn't seem like it'd be expensive, but it's $10, $20, $30 here, and a lot of times it's just easier to pay a professional to have your carpet installed because it is harder than it looks. Um, it seems easy, you just, oh, well, let's just rip the carpet up and we'll lay the new stuff flat, but it's actually pretty difficult, especially when you don't know what you're doing. So enough with the gibberish, let's get into the uh, removal. All right, so first thing is first, you're going to take your knee kicker, and if you happen to have one, your carpet owl, uh, you're going to put it kind of at the base of a wall here. So the whole object here is to push the carpet, to unhook it from the tack strip in order to be able to pull it up. So you're just going to give it a few decent kicks, kind of moving it towards the wall. At that point, you should be able to take your carpet owl and just kind of start pulling it up there. And now you have the start of it. So you just kind of take the knee kicker now and just kind of keep going down the wall. Let me move the uh, camera here. And just continue on down the wall until you go all the way around the room and uh, detach all the carpet from the texture.
And it's important, very important step here, people. Take a coffee break. Continue. So now at this point, once it's pretty much detached, you should be able to honestly just pretty much mostly pull it out. All right, so at this point, we're just gonna pull up all of this carpet. Now, what I like to do is to, in order to get out of the room, I'll probably end up cutting this in half. Now, when you cut carpet, I prefer to take your knife and you're gonna wanna cut it from the back. Now, one of the most important things in doing this with carpet is having fresh razor blades. So a, fle a fresh blade is your friend, a dull blade, you will uh, cut yourself. You have to be very, very careful with these tools. They are very, very sharp. But if you're going to cut this carpet to get it out here and make it easier, cutting on the back and just going down the middle like that of the backing will cut it much easier uh, than trying to cut it on the face. Now that that's all done, now when you're installing new carpet, uh, we always recommend putting in new padding with your carpet because it will um, give it a whole new feel and help the carpet wear better when you have a nice uh, new padding under there. I'm not gonna cover the padding in this video, but uh, it is recommended probably that you should put new padding in unless uh, it's in really, really good shape. You can see that this padding here is a little bit worn out here in the traffic areas. Also, shameless plug, if you guys are new, uh, if you could please hit that like button if you're enjoying the video and subscribe to our channel, I'd really appreciate it. A few moments later. All right, so we got the new roll of carpet in here. So my honest opinion is the hardest part about installing carpet is literally getting it in here and rolled out because you need extra on all sides to make sure you can cut it for the closet and stuff. But um, this is where it pays to have help. Unfortunately, I'm by myself making this video, but we're gonna get it done. So after a few minutes of struggling, now I cut this piece a little bit big. Uh, I did that on purpose because this was the uh, last piece of carpet that I had for this and I wanted to make sure I had enough because sometimes, you know, you don't want to undermeasure. So this is kind of what you'll be looking like. Um, I got a little bit extra on the ends there and I have it folded up to here. So what we're going to have to do here, and this part is where it gets a little bit complicated where if you're inexperienced, you can really mess this up because um, you have to cut this around the walls and around that side to be able to fold this flat in order to get this good. So all these wrinkles will be gone. But preliminary, this is what you're looking like. So what I've done here. There is, I've kind of gone around and done my first round of trimming. So I've trimmed around there, trimmed around there, left a lot of extra. So that way we can cut around it when we actually start installing it. But at this process, this is kind of what it looks like. Some people might have different methods of doing it, but I find this for beginners is probably the best because you don't want to overcut. Once you overcut, um, well, you're kind of done. So I'd rather have a bunch of extra to leave room for mistakes in this situation than uh, you know try to cut it more precisely and mess up. So during this phase, this is where the knee kicker really comes in. It really helps you kind of position the carpet if you have to move it one way or another. That's really what the knee kicker is good for. Now, this is the only tool you have at your disposal. You're pretty much just going to kick the corners in all the way around this room using your tucking tool to uh, tuck the carpet kind of in place just to start. Now, I'm going to be using a power stretcher because I have one, because we um, do stretching here at Steam Boss uh, to get rid of all those pesky carpet ripples. Um, if you only have a knee kicker, um, it's not ideal, but I mean, it can be done. People do do it with just a knee kicker. You would want to start in a corner and then uh, work your way around the room in order to stretch the carpet the best you can. But hey, if you're a little guy like me, you don't have a lot of that knee power, let's get the power stretcher. Alright, so there is your power stretcher. So this tool goes uh, with the poles from one end of the room to the other. Let me show you guys the business end of this. Uh, so we got the business end right here. Look at that, huh? Pretty dangerous, in fact, so you got to really respect this tool. But basically have a mechanism here that goes from one end of the room to the other and uh, helps you stretch the carpet when your knee can't possibly do it. All right, so in order to get this started here, I have knee kicked in and tucked in that corner with my tucker tool. You got the pole going from that end. And now I'm gonna go to this end, and we're gonna stretch this baby. Go all the way around the room and do this stretching wise. If you don't have one of these, uh, you're kind of left with just knee kicking the rest of it there. But I'm gonna go ahead and stretch this in, kind of all the way around the room here, and then show you guys how to trim it. And then 
Bidang. Another tool that I like using is this here. It's kind of like a spatula looking thing, but it really helps you hold the carpet in place when you're trying to tuck it and then I use the tucker later. You don't need one of these, but it helps. Uh, you can get all of this stuff. A lot of these basic ones you can actually get at stores like Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. Uh, some of the specialty stuff like the power structure you'd have to get from an actual flooring company. But like I said, um, for the sake of the video, I'm going to try to use as minimal tools as possible. And yes, I'm doing this in sandals. It's Florida, it's hot, and well, let's face it, this is actually my house, so it doesn't matter. All right, at this point, everything is stretched around this room here. So all I have left to do pretty much is just trim everything. Uh, a couple of corners I gotta touch up there, but so at this point, you're going to be using, if that's all you have, is your razor blade knife, which you have to be very, very careful with um, in order to trim. What I recommend doing is kind of peeling it back and cutting it like this. Um, you can cut it like this, but uh, you're gonna risk uh, damaging your baseboard behind it. Um, that's why, if at all possible, I definitely recommend you getting one of these here, which these are uh, not super cheap, but if you're gonna be doing more than one room, um, I would definitely recommend getting one of these. It'll save you a lot of time. So there you have it. So, I'm gonna take you guys off the stand. Whoa, okay. Um, so there you have it. So we got nice, I need to clean up a little bit, but nice edge there. So that's why this carpet cutter helps a ton, because that would have taken me like five times as long if I didn't have that. So I'll trim that, I'm gonna go around the room and do the same thing, and I'll show you guys when I'm done. go some newly installed carpet now I took my time and it took me a little bit especially because I was filming the video for you guys um, I'm sure a professional professional who does this every single day could do it a lot faster than me um, I am certified in carpet repair and we also do uh, reinstalls when it comes to um, carpet stretching uh, but as far as uh, actual installs um, it's just kind of a side thing that we do if we're asked so Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. Please hit that like button. Subscribe to our channel if you are new. I really appreciate it. And as usual, I'll see all you guys on the next video. Peace.